Hi guys, Jordan with Motion Array, and welcome back to video 7 of this After Effects Basics course. Today, we're going to be taking a look at how to work with null objects, how to parent, and at the very end, we're going to take a look at how to preview. So, let's jump into it. You've made it all the way to video 7 of this After Effects course, so congratulations! You're nearly at the end and you've already learned so much, enough to start getting really comfortable using After Effects on your own. To start off this video, we're going to be taking a look at how to work with null objects and how to parent layers to them. So to start off with, what is a null object? Well, basically a null object is an invisible layer that has all of the same properties as a visible layer, but just doesn't cause any visual distraction. To create one, go up to Layer, New, Null Object. And you can see now that a new layer appears on our timeline, and our viewer shows a small square here in the center. This square is your null object. But why would this be useful? Well, let's create a situation and see one way that it might be used. Let's create a shape like we did in video 4, and I'm going to create a triangle. And now our composition has our null object as well as our triangle shape layer. And now if we wanted to animate this triangle to enter in off screen from the left, we already learned how to do that, and we can do so by animating the triangle's position properties. But you can also do it by using the nulls properties. First thing that we're going to do is called parenting. Parenting is basically telling After Effects that we want one layer to follow exactly what the parent layer is doing, like a child following their parent. To parent a layer to your null object, we're going to go to our triangle layer here, and we're going to hold this spiral here and drag this line called a pick whip, and then we're going to release the pick whip over the null object layer. And now we can see here that underneath the parent section, our box here says null because our triangle is parented to our null. Now if we animate this null to come in from the left, we can see that our shape also follows in exactly the same way. Pretty neat, right? And if you change any of the null's properties, the triangle will follow in a similar way. You can change position, scale, and rotation. But the question still remains, why wouldn't you just animate the triangle layer itself? Well, let's just change up the situation slightly. Let's say now that we don't just have one shape, we have three. And we want all of them to move identically. It would be pretty difficult and time consuming to do that all by animating each one individually. But it's way faster and easier to do just a simple pick whip or select the parent from this drop down here for each of our two remaining shape layers. And now when we play back, all of the shapes follow the same path. And we didn't have to put any extra work in, we just piggybacked off of the one animation that we already created. As you begin to progress out of the beginner stages of After Effects, you'll start to see that as your projects get more complex, it saves you a lot of time and energy to be able to create easy, simple shortcuts for yourself. And using null objects is a great tool for this. And the last benefit that we want to cover for null objects is that even though it keeps the movement identical for every layer that's parented together, it still allows for each individual layer to retain its own unique characteristics on top of that. So for example, we have our shapes here coming into frame and they all stick together. But if after they come into frame, we wanted the triangle alone to break off from the group afterwards, it can do that. Just animate that triangle layer on its own instead of the null, and the null will respect that layer's ability to move on its own at the same time. So now the end result is that you have everything moving together, and then you also have the ability for things to move in isolation. I really hope that helps you to have a better understanding of how to use null layers and why they can actually be really useful. But I think it's important to point out that you don't just have to parent things to null objects. You can actually parent any one layer to another layer by the same method that we used before. So let's say for example that you have two clips on screen at the same time, and you want to animate both of them so that they move onto screen. You only have to animate one of them to follow this action, and then you can parent that second one to follow.
great. Just keep in mind though, the starting point of where you parent these clips together is important. So for example, if we parent our clips together while they're in this final position, they'll act completely in uniform. But let's say now that my playhead is positioned here midway through the movement, our parenting would keep this relationship between our clips so that if we move forward, we can see that our layer moves with our parented clip, but from the starting point that we gave it. Just to keep in mind that as you work with parenting, that your playhead position can make a difference. So we've covered null objects and parenting, and we're about to look at previewing your videos in After Effects. But quickly before we do that, it's also important to note that we've worked with a variety of effects and parameters throughout this course already. And you've noticed that we've animated a lot of different attributes. As long as an effect, attribute, or anything can be manipulated and has a stopwatch beside it, that parameter can be animated to change over time. You might be surprised of all the different things that you can actually animate. And you might also be surprised at the ways that you can cause things to be animated. There's one last method that we're quickly going to introduce you to in order to manipulate your layers, but it's pretty advanced, so we're just going to show you that it's there and then let you delve into it more when you feel comfortable. Within After Effects, you don't always have to tell your clips exactly how to behave. You can actually give them boundaries to follow and then tell them to work within that on their own. The way you would implement this is with what's called expressions. Expressions are basically the ability to type in commands into specific parameters to achieve a result for your clip. To get to the expressions capabilities, go to your dropdown for transform and choose the parameter that you want to work with. For us, I'm just going to choose position. Now hover over the animation stopwatch and hold alt and then click. Now you should see another line drop down and on the right underneath your layer box, you should see a set of text that you can edit. This part might get a little overwhelming, so we're just going to quickly go over a simple example and then link to another video if you want to check that out in more detail later. With this text here highlighted, we're just going to type in a new expression. Wiggle, bracket, 5, comma, 40, close bracket. And now when we click off of the clip and play, we can see that we've told our attributes to wiggle around as if the camera they were being filmed from is shaking. If you want to go more into detail with this effect, we have a whole video that we did just for it, and you can find a link to it in the description below. But hopefully with that example, I hope you're able to see just how much you're able to do inside of After Effects. It's a really powerful program. But the more that you do with this program, and the more effects and layers and pieces of footage and shapes that you build, the more it will start to bog down your computer. And you'll start to notice that your playback won't be running at full speed. So how do you actually view your project back at full speed if it's running slow? Well, let's go here to our preview panel and see what we can do. Up here, you should be able to see a few different buttons at the top. These are our navigation buttons for the timeline if you don't want to grab the playhead. You can go to the first frame, one frame previous, you can play and pause, you can go one frame forward, and then lastly, you can go to the very final frame. And you can also play and pause your playback with the space bar, or choose a different shortcut key to use instead from this window here. And you should be able to notice that when you hit spacebar, your playback will start, but depending on your project and the power of your computer, it might not play back in real time. You might also notice that when you look at your timeline, you might see one of three things, either a green line, a blue line, or no line over certain parts of your timeline. Wherever there's a green line, it means that your footage has been cached to the RAM of your computer. This is the best and fastest solution. Next, blue means that that portion has been cached to your computer's disk drive. Not quite as good, but still far better than the last option, nothing. Which means that your footage there has not been cached at all. In order to experience a proper playback at full speed, your project will need to be fully cached for whatever you want to actually view. And the way that you initiate this is by hitting the spacebar and to begin the preview. What After Effects will try to do is run through and cache your project on the fly as fast as it can. If you have a good enough computer and a light enough project, you might be able to experience a full playback on the first pass through. 
But likely what will happen is that you'll have to wait for it to do one full pass through of your timeline and then on the second playthrough it'll be more or less full speed. For our example, it's pretty light and we don't need to wait long. But if we have a larger project, like this one here for example, we can see that it will actually take a lot longer for it to pass through before we can even start to view in real time. So how can we optimize this so that we can have the best experience possible and maybe not even have to wait as long? To start with, ask yourself do you want to see all of the work that you've done on the timeline or just a specific section? If you want to see everything, you can have the entire duration selected under range or just to have work area selected and then make sure your in and out markers have the entire timeline selected. But if you just want a section of it to view, you can place your playhead at the starting point that you want and hit B. Then go to the ending point that you want and hit N. This will give you a new highlighted work area. And then if you have the work area option selected here, your computer will only focus on caching and playing back that specific area. Next, you can choose here if you want the preview to start from where your playhead is positioned when you hit spacebar, or if you want it to start all the way back from the beginning on its own once you hit the spacebar. Next, there's these three boxes which will each impact how much work After Effects has to do in playing back your clip. Obviously, if you had the choice, you'd want to see it in the best and fullest settings. But in case you can't wait for that, or you want or need to see it faster, you can do a couple of things. You can drop the playback frame rate below what the composition is set up for. So even though our composition is set for almost 30 frames per second, we can drop our playback to 15 frames per second. And our playback will look choppier, but it will be ready and playback much more readily. I'm just going to set it back to auto for now. Next, you can skip sequential frames so that After Effects doesn't have to render every single frame individually. If you skip one frame at a time, it'll drop every other frame. And you can also tell it to skip two or even five frames at a time in order to really boost the playback performance. It really won't look the same, but you can really use this to get a broad picture of what your project is looking like much faster. And finally, the resolution here is identical to the resolution tab of the viewer that we looked at earlier in this course. Dropping the resolution of the playback will make After Effects show a lower fidelity picture of each frame, but it'll be able to process everything at a lot faster of a rate. And finally, you can check full screen if every time you hit the spacebar, you want to see your composition played back at full screen on your computer. To get out of this full screen playback, just hit the spacebar again to pause. Knowing what each different parameter controls can help you to optimize your own playback for whatever situation you find yourself in. But at the end of the day, you're going to have to probably do at least a little bit of waiting if your project is larger. And guys, that's it for this video. You've already learned so much in this After Effects course, and you're almost at the end. The last thing we have to do is go over how to render out and export your video into its own unique file. And that's all coming up in the next and final video. I can't wait to see you there.